solutions of gases and water. Soda is, is the best nice example of this. Um, you have carbon dioxide dissolved in water. Most liquids do have some gases dissolved in them if they've been exposed to air. Um, lake water and seawater have oxygen dissolved in them, and that's what the fish are surviving on, is the oxygen dissolved in the water. Your blood has nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide dissolved in it. Even tap water has dissolved gases into, in it. If you heat um, a cup of water in the microwave, initially you'll see a lot of little tiny bubbles. And that's not the water boiling, but as the water warms up, the solubility of the gases goes down, and so you start to see those dissolved gases come out. Here's um, a picture uh, pouring soda, and here's cold soda and warm soda. It cracks me up. The, the, the author uses the term soda pop. I, I've lived in different parts of the country. I grew up calling it pop. But then I moved around, and every place I ended up, they called it soda. So I don't know if he's trying to just cover his bases or if he actually just lives somewhere where they call it soda pop. But doesn't that just sound a little silly? Do you want some soda pop? I don't know. Anyway, so I'm just going to ignore the pop and, and call it soda. But I think we all have noticed that cold soda doesn't foam up nearly as much as warm soda does. The carbon dioxide is more soluble in the cold soda than in the warm soda. And when you pour it and you're disturbing it, the gas will come out more of the warm soda. The warm soda also goes flat faster than cold soda does. So this is something you could try at home. Take some ordinary tap water and heat it. And before it gets to the boiling point, you're going to see a bunch of small bubbles. And what that is, is the dissolved gases coming out of solution. And then after, after that happens, and it increases more in temperature, you'll actually get real boiling, the big bubbles of water. And those are the water vapor that's not dissolved air. That's actually the water coming out. So the solubility of gases depends on temperature. It also depends on pressure. And Henry's Law describes this. The higher the pressure of a gas above a liquid, the more soluble the gas is in the liquid. So here we have an illustration of gas molecules on the surface and dissolved gas molecules. And um, in much the same way as the, the equilibrium, of a liquid and its vapor, there is an equilibrium between this gas and the concentration of the gas dissolved in the water. And some of these particles will leave and some of these particles in the, in the gas state will come into the solution. If we increase the pressure, we're essentially increasing the concentration of gas molecules and that will drive more of these into the solution. When you have an open container of soda and a closed container of soda, which one is going to lose its fizziness first? The open one, right? That's why you put the lid back on. When you put the lid back on, you prevent the carbon dioxide molecules from leaving. And so some pressure will build up here, and the, the concentration of gas dissolved in the liquid will stabilize. If the container is open and the carbon dioxide is allowed to leave, it will just keep leaving and leaving and leaving until it's all gone. It, it's not an instant process. It takes some time, but the soda will go flat. There's always a little bit of headspace in a can of soda or a two-liter bottle, and that's necessary because that's the carbon dioxide gas that's under pressure. And that's keeping carbon dioxide dissolved in the, in the soda. When you release that pressure, then you reduce the solubility, and it starts to bubble, and the bubbles come up. And that's what makes it fizzy. I like fizzy stuff. <laughs>